chance for Bondra, backhander to Gould scores! Beautiful from Chilliwack, dreadful from West Side. Babich trying to cut to the goal, mouth loose, puck, backhander from Grabowski somehow stays out. Scramble in the goal mouth there, and the Warriors get away with it. Hills almost turned it over to Max French, but it got through to Sitterly. Shot from Sitterly, blocked by Morris and bouncing puck, comes to the point for Thompson. David Thompson to Anderson, white a one-timer off a stick and wide. Oh, it comes to Grabowski and he scores. Banked it in off the net, Minder Rodrigue. A late power play goal for Chilliwack. Chiefs lead two zip. That's an underwhelming reaction from Chilliwack and the west side and the crowd. I think the only one maybe who knew that was in was Grabowski. Tonneth cuts the puck off at center ice. Nice read from him. To Basara head to Dempsey. Dempsey lifts the stick of Huseman, creates a chance. Dempsey stopped by Gillum. That's maybe his toughest save of the game so far with 5.06 remaining in period number two. Here to race in from the point. And he holds the play alive, at least for now. Blonley racing with Hansen. Blonley goes down. Good puck pursuit here from the Warriors. Bassar to Dempsey! Oh, boy, Becker, excuse me, and he's stopped by Gillum. Warriors get the puck back. Shot from Bassar, stopped by Gillum. Warriors getting some chances now. Can't beat Gillum. That's probably the best chance of the game. Bassar in front for Becker, snuck in from the point. I thought it was Dempsey. I think I just assumed it was Dempsey there. Backhand walks the line, fakes the shot, gives it to Simmons. Walking in, Simmons shoots, rebound there, and Gillum somehow holds the fort. French looked like he had a wide open net, and Gillum kept his paddle down and makes the save. Warriors just can't buy one tonight. Collision on the half wall there between Bassara and Spring. And Chiefs cleared out. Drew Morrison gloves it down at his blue line. Nice lead pass to Dempsey. Blondley's got some open ice. Dempsey to Blondley scores! Poor Mitch Gillum, 81 seconds short of his second shutout of the year. Even I didn't want to say it. He's been good tonight. Morrison doesn't have a shooting lane, feeds it to Simmons. He tips it on goal. And again, a strong save made by Gillum and some pushing and shoving behind the net after the whistle. Brett McKinnon's lost his helmet. French is in there, Hochhausen in there for West Side Simmons too. Babich is down on Peter, just 5D for you guys tonight. How were the legs? Uh, you know, I find the, the legs are better. You get into the game more and when you're playing more, you always seem to be going and you don't really have time to think. So I really like it. and. I think everybody, uh, the more you're out there, the better the legs are. So that makes it tough serving a 10-minute misconduct. Yeah, I think uh, that might have been a little hard on the other D there. And uh, I mean, I didn't like it either. It was a struggle to sit there in the box over 12. What did you like about the way your team played tonight? You know, I think we always stick together for a group for a fair part. And uh, I mean, we got the chances. We just didn't bury. And their goalie kept a few out of the net there. It's going to be your final home game here at Royal LePage Plays tomorrow night. Is that going to be emotional for you? Yeah, you know what, it will be. Uh, just try not to think about it and just, just play. And I'm sure uh, after the game's done, it'll all uh, hit me a little bit. But for now, just worry about playing. Right on. Thank you. No worries. Thank you. Rylan, how'd you like the way your team played tonight? Well, I thought we played pretty hard. And again, we've stood out here so many times, you and I, John. And I think special teams were a little bit of the key tonight, obviously. But, um, you know, as I said to Wayne, just chatting with him, I mean, there's no quit in our kids. And I thought we battled hard. We have a short bench. And... You know, we battled right to the end. We were in it right to, you know, I guess uh, the last uh, the last couple minutes. So, and I think that's the most important thing at this time of year, whether you're going into the playoffs or not, is that you don't want to have any quit in your hockey team, and our kids don't. It's kind of the way I was talking to my broadcast. You guys seem to play pretty well and systematically were okay. Maybe just a, a lack of that offensive spark. What can you do to get more offense? <laughs> well, if I knew how to do that, yeah. I probably um, would be a lot richer than I am right now, John. <laughs> and I'm not very rich, but um, that's the thing. I mean, to, you know, you can teach so many things, but I can't teach guys how to score goals. And, you know, yeah, we lacked a little offensive punch, I guess, tonight or flair. But, I mean, you got to look who's out of our lineup, too. I mean, you have Seb Lloyd and David Pope out of the lineup, two offensive guys who make things happen. Josh Monk from the back end makes things happen. And, you know, uh, Matthew Berry makes things happen, too, back there. So, I mean, we're 
you know, I don't know if we're offensively challenged, you know, when we don't have those guys, but, you know, we just didn't have time. A couple bounces went over our sticks, I thought, late in the third. I mean, you know, what's the difference here? I mean, we lose 3-1 and a couple bounces, we could be in the overtime right now. Not that physical a game, but then things kind of boiled over late in the third period. Brett McKinnon was pretty fired up. What do you think happened? Well, there was a comment made to Brett, an uh, inappropriate comment made to him by uh, a member of the other team there, a, a kid on the other team who probably doesn't need to make that comment. And, you know, we'll, uh, we'll deal with that with our league. And you still do have one more game against Chilliwack, so are we expecting a, a pretty good battle next weekend, next Saturday, for the last matchup of the season? Well, we've had good games, yeah. you know, every time we've played them, so I would assume that again. And, I mean, there's lots on the line, and there's lots on the line for both teams. I mean, you know, we've said all, all along it's about character and it's about not quitting, and, you know, we still have games to play, and we're going to approach them the same way. And a nice opportunity tomorrow against Vernon to play spoiler against a team that you hate just being the divisional <laughs> rival, right? Well, yeah, I mean, you, you know, you respect so many things about Vernon. Yeah, right. I mean, and I certainly like Jason Williamson and Chris Shaw and them. But, you know, you certainly like beating them. I mean, uh, I've had a lot of battles with Vernon over the years, being in Salmon Arm for seven. So it's always nice to have those good games against them. And, um, you know, we're looking forward for it uh, tomorrow. And, of course, you won a Royal Bank Cup as a player for the Vipers. We won't forget that. Yes, yes, <laughs> I did. So there's some history that goes way, way back with me there. But, I mean, um, you know, it's always fun when we play those guys because, they, you know, they have been to the Royal Bank Cup the last three years. And no matter what their record is, I think they're, uh, I think they're better than their record. So, I mean, uh, it's always fun to play them. And last time we went in there, in all my years, that was one of the best games I think uh, a team has played that I've coached against Vernon. I thought we, you know, very very rarely do you kind of dominate them in their building. And I certainly don't want to come on here and say we dominate them. But I thought we did a really good job for three periods. And then in uh, overtime, they got quite a bit on us. So, I mean, we're looking forward for it tomorrow. Me too. Thank you. My pleasure. You can hear it in the way we